Good morning, Zero here. And today we talk about the elephant in the room. The thing I should have talked about weeks ago, but haven't gotten around to. Gosh. We're talking about China. Video games. And uh, the NRA. The NRA. <laughs> no. The NRA has nothing to do with China and video games. It just popped into my head, so I had to say it. Hmm. Anyway, um, nah, seriously, we'll be talking about China, video games, and all that good stuff. And, um, uh, yeah. So, grab yourself some coffee, sit back, relax, and let's get into it, shall we? So, apparently, parents in China law rule, rule, loud, rule, limiting video game time for kids. I am, to be honest, I have no idea what that word, bleh, that word actually means. So I had to Google it. <laughs> uh, because I wasn't sure if that meant good or bad. But apparently, according to the Oxford Dictionary or whatever, or Google's Dictionary, um, it is to praise, uh, highly, uh, especially in public contents. Anyway, so praising that. So, uh, you know, parents apparently are praising this rule, limiting video games. So why, why does all this matter? Because China has, it's not really recent, but China has been war or ra waging a war on video games and they have been cracking down a lot recently. And by cracking down, I mean they have been limiting, um, you know, setting up these rules, these laws and stuff to limit children's ability to play a game down to about three hours weekly. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's a lot of things coming down the pipeline for those over in China, as well as face recognition, like, uh, for instance, the phone, you know, the camera right there at the top of the phone. Um, you know, where it can actually recognize who's playing said game and automatically limit their game time with it as of right now because of the way they have things set up and stuff. You know, it's linked to an account, but there have been some things that have cropped up, uh, sort of an under black, you know, sort of a black market of sorts of uh, sites and other things in China where you can rent an a adults account to keep playing your favorite game so you can log in through the things using that and continue playing and uh you know i heard but i'm not 100 percent sure it's like i don't know like uh five bucks or something an hour um so i'm sure they're making bank <laughs> off of that but uh also china is cracking down and trying to find those and you know get rid of those as well to to prevent this because you know gaming is an addiction um you know we we can talk about the addictive properties of whether games should be classified as an addiction it's no more of an addiction than uh you know smoking cigarettes which you know i don't really have one right here but or drinking alcohol i guess um which are both addictive things. Yeah, shoot myself in the foot with that one, why don't you? Anyway, the problem is there's a lot of games out there, especially from companies like Netties and Tencent, that are designed to be addictive. Gaming in itself may not be completely addictive. Um, you know, it's like reading a really good book. Uh, this is why I like am a fan of RPGs, right? I hate reading. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say that while also say that I love reading RPGs. Anyway, I hate reading. I'm not one to pick up a book and read it that often. Um, that's why I didn't really get a whole lot into comics. Uh, I am into manga, of course, but, you know, um, when it comes down to it, when it came to, say, older RPGs, you had to read it, and I really enjoyed it. I really liked the story. I want to see what's next. But, you know, as a person, I've got to put it down and say, okay, enough is enough. I need to go sleep for three hours so I can work for 12. Uh, you know, that sort of thing. 
but a lot of these games that are coming out these days are designed in a way to force you onto a treadmill and keep you there for as long as possible. Um, you know, can, we can use World of Warcraft as a great example of that right now, where everything they they essentially do and introduce into the game is another system that is tied to your player's power. And if you don't do that thing, you are not as strong as everybody else. You fall behind. You can't compete. And, and the things that you want to do, whether it's PvP, PvP or PvE content, because you've stepped off the treadmill for too long and you need to essentially grind your way back into it. And, you know, with the things like loot boxes and stuff, which, uh, you know, is more or less gambling at this point, um, especially if you're playing something like FIFA <laughs> or anything with their packs and trying to get the best players and all the stuff that's happening around there. You know, it it has this pro. It gives this um uh, sort of addictive property to it, even if the game itself wouldn't be considered addictive. Um, you know, if it was something like an RPG or something, uh, that you know you get addicted to the story. You want to hear what's next. It's like reading a book. You're on chapter five. You've got to read chapter six. Next thing you know, it the crows or the crows. The rooster is roosting. <laughs> is crowing and uh you know it's 9 a.m you realize the sun is up and uh you know it's 6 a.m or whatnot and you've been up all night reading this book and you're still you know 50 chapters away from the end or whatnot but it's whatever the point is they're fighting it right um they they want to fight this addictive um, the addiction of video games and their way of doing it is to essentially lock you out of it right they, they've put in play things in the plays. They have ID cards um, to report on, uh, you know, gaming companies they believe are violating restrictions and um, all this other stuff. And um, yeah, I mean, it's still one of the biggest markets, of course. So that's why a lot of our companies want to work with, say, like Netties or Tencent, because that's how they get into that country. But China is waging this war, and then you've got outlets like Kotaku and stuff who are propping this, going, the rest of the world needs to look at China and follow their example. <laughs> and I'm just going to be like, F you. <laughs> I mean, sorry, I, I, I'm not for this at all. But that's what's going on, right? Um, apparently, parents are loving it, whether that's true or not. It's totally up to you, but it's not unlike the CCP to lie to the rest of the world about what's actually going on in their country <coughs> and stuff. Um, actually didn't say anything in that cough. Huh. Pretty sure the cough itself was self-explanatory. But, you know. It is what it is at that point in time. Um, but yeah, they, they are looking to try and ex expand that influence into the rest of the world. So uh, be ready for that. And of course, fight back if you can, you know, by any means that you possibly can, I, I guess. Sort of like a call to action almost, but not. Yeah. Anyway, so they call it spiritual opium. Um, there's really not much more to say about this other than the fact that China's doing this. Um, they are trying to, you know, expand their influence worldwide, of course, because that's what the CCP wants to do. And places like Kotaku and other games journalists out there are propping it up, saying it's a great idea. We should follow their example and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, that's all I got to say about that. So let me know what you think down in the comments below and I will talk to you later. See ya. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment, smash that like button, and always subscribe for more. And of course, there are other videos floating around somewhere on the screen, so click one of those and see if you can find something that uh, suits your fancy. Till then, I'll see you later. Bye.